people understand that for many people on this stage, the economy's doing terrifically well. But for a lot of Americans, it's not doing so well. The people who handle the bags and make the beds at our hotels and serve the food, many of them are having to work two jobs. And that's barely paying the rent. And you know what else? They don't think that they can afford for their kids to go to college. They're pretty sure they're not going to be able to afford health insurance. And so I hope in the course of this we can talk about how a fair tax really lifts up everybody, including those at the bottom of the economic spectrum, and untaxes the poor people in our culture. Congressman Hunter, do you agree with that, the idea of replacing the IRS, the income tax, the direct tax? Uh, well, actually, I'm, I'm, sales a, tax? I'm a sponsor of the fair tax, but let me tell you, uh, Chris, what is missing from this economy. 1.8 million jobs that have moved to communist China from the United States, including over 54,000 jobs from Michigan. You know, a couple of years ago, uh, when our guys were getting hurt with roadside bombs in Iraq, I tried to find one steel company left in America that could still make high-grade armor steel plate to put on the sides of our Humvees to protect against roadside bombs. I found one company left that could still do that. And as you go down through the array of military systems that we need for our security, we find that more and more of those have gone offshore. So this is also a security uh, issue. You know what, in, in Willow Run, just a couple of miles away, we made a bomber every 60 minutes during World War II. We made tens of thousands of tanks in Michigan. Today we could not do that because we fractured the great industrial base of this country and we pushed it offshore with bad trade deals. And I would say to my colleagues, uh, and Senator Thompson, the other senators, you all voted for most favored nation trading status for communist China. That set the groundwork for 1.8 million high paying manufacturing jobs moving offshore going offshore, some of them never to return. And what I would do is, is pass the Hunter Ryan bill, which would put countervailing duties on the Chinese when they cheat. They are cheating on trade right now. I'd bring those jobs back home to the United States, and I would connect up the middle class of America with the Republican Party one more time. Senator Thompson, do you want to respond to that question or that, that comment by the congressman about Chinese trade? Yeah. <clears throat> Free and fair trade has been good for America, They're responsible for millions of jobs uh, in this country. We cannot turn our back on that. I was one of the strictest uh, advocates of imposing restrictions on the Chinese for their behavior in terms of exporting dangerous materials to other countries and, and tying some of our trade uh, policies to what they did in that regard. Uh, they have still not, not done enough. They have devalued their currency, which uh, puts them in a uh, favored position as far as our manufacturers are concerned. But in terms of turning our back on free trade, that's not the direction to go in. It's meant too much for our country, and every country in the history of the world that's ever uh, turned its back on free trade has suffered for it as a consequence. Jim? Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you please to refrain from the applause so that we can get as much time as possible with the candidates. Thank you so much. Senator Brownback, are you prepared to say categorically that under a Brownback administration there will not be a tax increase? Yes. Now, I'd like to use the rest of my answer and time uh, to talk about some other things because clearly the last thing we need to do is raise taxes in this country. Currently, the country now, the average citizen works until the first part, middle of May, just to pay their taxes. We're taxed to the max. But I think it's not enough just to say I'm not going to raise taxes. What should we go to differently? Because the current tax code really is an abomination. People don't understand it. It's manipulative. It's Washington trying to direct people's lives. So I put forward a proposal of an optional flat tax. Uh, and putting that on the table, saying, okay, you can pick this. If you want to stay in the code, go ahead. God bless you. But here's an optional flat tax. Sixteen countries around the world have gone to the flat tax. Nobody's gone back away from it because it creates growth, it creates growth in the economy, and it increases revenue for the government. And we also, we have to get spending under control. Here you've got to change the system. And I've been around it long enough to see that Republicans are Democrats in control. The system is built to spend. I have constituents come in all the time to my office and uh, they say, I'm a conservative, but could we have this bridge? How about this hospital? Uh, they, uh, they never say, we've got too much federal money, would you please cut it? Nobody has ever told me that. So I think we need to take that BRAC military process for base closing, <clears throat> apply it to the rest of government. So you have an annual process for calling federal spending that requires a vote of Congress. So name one program you would cut. 
Advanced technology program would be a good one to start with. It goes towards uh, high-end spending, corporate welfare programs. There's an abundance of those that we've gone at. Worked uh, with Senator McCain, a number of us did. But cutting spending is tough to do because you always got somebody pushing back and seeking more. That's why you got to change the system so that it regularly requires a vote of Congress on things to cut. That's what will actually reduce spending. Congressman Tancredo, same question. Are you prepared to say categorically that under your administration there will be no tax increase? Absolutely. Um, I'll take the oath. The fact is this, that when we talk about spending cuts, which everybody I think on this stage uh, adheres to and certainly pays lip service to, we have to think about wh what exactly it is that pushes spending at the federal level. And believe it or not, it isn't even earmarks. Uh, I, I'm all for dumping them, it's okay with me, but don't think for a moment that if we did it tomorrow, all of a sudden we'd have a balanced budget. Of course we would not, because the thing that pushes spending at the federal level is mandatory spending. It's two things, really, Medicare, Social Security. Now you can cut the entire budget, the discretionary budget, you could cut the whole thing out and only come close, essentially. Well, you'd, you'd cut the deficit pretty significantly, but frankly, you really want to do without uh, uh, funding for the armed services? 